I started with flow, I think. <laughs> I should <laughs> I'll make myself clear uh, from the beginning. And I'm very, very happy to be writing TypeScript today. One of the things that has come up over the years is the topic of like how sound is sound enough. Just jumping off on that, what are your thoughts on on that as like a broad level topic for TypeScript? I think the the right level of soundness is like the highest that you can get away with and still have a acceptable developer experience, right? Because I mean, if you actually encounter like a, a bug in your program due to unsoundness, like that really sucks because that that's why you had the type check in the first place, right? It was to not have that happen. Yeah. Um, but like that said, I think um, if you have something that is starting with something like JavaScript, where things that you can do are have have defined behavior per the spec, um, you know, it's not like C plus plus where like accessing a pointer out of bounds is going to like cause a, you know, actual a true undefined behavior as as people call it. Yeah. If you have a system like that that's the underlying runtime, then you need to have some allowances for like the things that people end up doing. So, um, like a classic example is like. Um, people will declare a type where they're like, well, it, the following like five keys are numbers and every other key that you could possibly define in this type, any string that you want is a Boolean. Um, so then people want semantics. They're like, well, if I index it by an arbitrary string, let's just pretend it wasn't one of those five keys and give me back a Boolean. Uh, but if I access it by one of these known properties, then it should be, you know, one of those, whatever I said, number, I think. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and, and like, you brought up flow there, like flow and TypeScript to actually have different opinions on like wow, what's the right way to represent that and how sound you should be in that situation. Mm -hmm. um, and and there are a bunch of other cases, right? Like um, read only isn't particularly well propagated. Um, yep. In practice, that doesn't seem to be a big deal. Like mostly, you just want to prevent accidental writes on a few properties here and there, and you don't need full cons correctness. But it's always something that we're looking to be like, well, is this we're making the right call here? Um, do we need a new strict flag and you know, if you go look in the strict family, you'll see all the different kind of options that um, we've added over the years. And I, I think there's still room to grow there. Um, and there might be room to grow in the other direction, too. There might be things where we're being too strict, for example. Got you. Yeah, I think, I think, I mean, this actually came up yesterday. We have a couple of people who are newer to the team. And so we're trying to, like, run through how did we get to this feature, that feature? How, or why do we do this internally or that internally, right? And... And so, you know, we'll, we'll have something like, oh, well, we have this concept of assignability, right? And it's based on whether or not you can substitute one type for another, but like, it's not perfect subtyping, right? And so like, why, yeah. do, why are we there? And so, oh, because you have to have any and you have to have all of these things that make it pragmatic to use the type system. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a weird sort of thing because like when we talk about soundness, the technical term is it doesn't get stuck, right? And like that type theoretic sense. And so that means that like your language doesn't have anything that it can continue doing. Whereas in JavaScript, like it's all very specified what will happen. Like, I mean, you will, you will throw an exception maybe in some cases. Um, and, and so like you have an underlying runtime system that defines exactly what will happen. And, and, it, and it prevents you from doing something that is like way too terrible. Right. And that doesn't mean it's perfect, but like, you know, I've spoken to C++ developers who sometimes come to types and they say, well, well, I don't know if I can trust the types because I've heard it isn't sound. And I say, I'm sorry, C++, the thing, the language <laughs> where the compiler will just like silently remove or add code for you because it found undefined behavior. Like, you know, so, so there, there's, there's trade-offs. And what, what, what TypeScript guarantees is it enough that you can really make robust programs, right? And, and we want to make it better, right? And, and there's like a, You've probably seen that there's like a non-goal of soundness. Mm -hmm. I keep using air quotes today. A non-goal yeah, yeah. of soundness, um, but that that doesn't mean that we're we're against trying to tighten the type system. With, and and Ryan said it exactly right. Like as far as you can get, get away with it, right? As as long as you can make sure that you're we're not getting in the way of your developer experience. I think just the, I'll keep going one more one more it round is, yeah. is um, the. There's an interesting distinction to make here because, um, like, let's say you pull some data off the wire, um, which is like 99% likely what you're going to be doing in your JavaScript at some point, right? You can either say, well, we're going to have a truly, truly sound programming language and say, you have to write basically like IOTS or Zod style verification and do a complete static validation of 
all the data that you just got off the wire before you're allowed to do anything with it. Um, and I think most JS developers would say like reasonably, like, no, like that just came from the same server that me, myself, the JS code came from. We're all in agreement about what this data shape is. I'm going to do a downcast on this data that I got off the wire into this expected data shape. Yep. Um, that is unsound. Like that is what we mean when we say it's unsound, right? Um, because like a downcasts are allowed. There are languages that don't allow downcasts. And the yeah. the the lived experience of soundness, I think, is what's the highest order <laughs> bit that you have to think about. Because if you're in a language where the language is constantly like, oh no, you didn't quite prove it. You you need to do a downcast now. Um, mm -hmm. Well, you know, <laughs> if you look at the TypeScript bug for we crash. It's all places where we did incorrect downcasts, right? And it's like, once you have the human deciding what the types are, the human is going to like, make way more mistakes than the computer because the computer is perfect. Um, so figuring out how you make the language such that you don't need to do those dangerous downcasts as often while still allowing you to do those downcasts in the first place because that is like idiomatic programming in JavaScript. You know, like mm -hmm. before TypeScript existed, no one would even think to do that level of validation on like, Yep. data coming off the server. And I think it would be like totally out of bounds for us to say like, that's a new requirement because like we've decided to be sound and that means you can't do this thing. So um, I, I always think about just like, you know, you don't want to make a language where every other line needs a downcast uh, just to get your job done. Cause that's going to make a, a language that is ultimately has more runtime type errors rather than fewer. Have you guys ever used Elm? I haven't. This was like the promise of Elm. Um, it's a, I guess there have never been any type errors detected in Elm because it takes this like super heavy handed approach of like, we're going to, we're going to valid, like, just like you said, we're going to validate every single input inside of the language. Everything is a hundred percent squeaky clean and there's no escape hatch. Um, it's like, uh, it's an interesting thought experiment.